preview. Let's say preview. Blood is a liquid fluid that is guided through vessels to distributed substance throughout the body. It is roughly about 8% of our body weight. Technically, oops, God, do I, oops, no, 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 that. My screen is so full always. Technically, blood is connective tissue with the basic three components, cells, fibers, and ground substance. Remember from the tissue chapter. Do you remember that? Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Well, you can always look back, right? We had this thing called epithelial tissue, and you think of like all cells stacked right next to each other, like skin has that, or uh, in like the whatever. Skin is a good example. And then you have connective tissue, and that's the, all the other stuff, mostly, except for muscle and, and for nerve. And then all of those connective tissue things have cells and then fibers. And then ground substance. Like in the bone, the cells are the cells, but the fiber is collagen and ground substance is calcium. In the blood, cells are the different cell types. The fibers we'll talk about is fibrinogen, and the ground substance will be water, basically, or liquid. So anyway, that's the tissue chapter. You can go back to book one for that. Blood plasma makes it liquid. That's the ground substance part. Fibers are used in the blood to patch up broken vessels and prevent blood loss. That's very good, but it's very complicated. Can you list the cellular components of blood? Isn't it like... Oh, yeah. One person talking, then I need the name, so I keep track of that. Okay, who's talking? Um, Kirsty. Good. Oh. Right. Isn't it... Thrombocytes, leukocytes, yep. and erythrocytes. Erythrocytes. Good. Yeah. Excellent. So, yes, it is thrombocytes will be platelets. That will help with uh, patching broken blood vessels. We'll talk about that. And then, and then leukocytes are white blood cells, and erythrocytes are red blood cells. And we have blood right here. Ching. Red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. So right now, you probably know, right? White blood cells have to do with the immune system. You know that? Yes. You guys know that? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And then red blood cells have a lot to do with bringing oxygen to the tissues. And oxygen helps with making energy, ATP. And then platelets will have to do with when a blood vessel is broken and the blood just wants to squirt out, platelets help patch that um, broken blood vessel up. So the blood doesn't just leak out and that wouldn't help, right? Because um, uh, that's internal bleeding or external bleeding and that's not a good thing. All righty, oops, let's see, share. I have to go back to this here, there we go. And there we go. All the cells in blood make up roughly 45% of the blood volume. What term do we use to express that number? Hemocrit, hematocrit. And who's talking? Marisol. There you go, oh, hematocrit, that's right. Marisol. We can go to the next one. That's just a terminology question, really. Um, blood has many functions. It can, for example, pick up excess heat produced by the organs and carry it close to the skin surface and let it off, let it radiate off. Another example, blood's white blood cells help defend us against invaders we don't want. What is the job of red blood cells? Transporting oxygen Wait, from the lungs to the body. Nadiri. Okay, transporting oxygen. From the lungs to the body. From the lungs to the body. Perfect. Is everybody clear with that? Yes. Yes. Yep. It's all pretty straightforward, right? Here we got uh, how much blood it is. That's how much blood you got in your system, more or less. There was that hematocrit. Where all the blood stuff comes from. That's interesting. Bone. All the blood components, the cellular components come from bone. Uh, so that's kind of cool. And then here we got... We got what red blood cells do. They mainly, they transport the oxygen. And then the white blood cells defend us against immunity. And then, the, um, uh, and then in plasma, in the liquid portion of blood, we do a lot of carrying around of stuff, nutrients and 
metabolic waste and hormones. And, and then we have that um, platelet when a blood vessel gets a cut, what happens to patch that up? That's called blood coagulation. Uh, and we, we, the interesting part about the, the, the fiber in blood is fi it has to be insoluble uh, uh, to patch it up, but we want the fiber to be soluble as it travels in the blood because otherwise it's going to clot the blood and we don't want blood clotting. That's a problem. And then I, I described the heat stuff in the text uh, that we uh, read. All right, let's see. That's probably good enough for that, huh? Insoluble is one of the things we learned about in chemistry, right? Like where it like goes through water or... Um, yeah, like soluble. Um, if it's soluble, it like you know you can get the fiber that you put in water, and it's it's soluble. It like just goes in the water, and you don't see it no more. Okay, that's soluble, and so we want the fiber to be soluble as it travels through the blood, and we don't have a problem, so it doesn't clump. Okay, it doesn't clump together. But we want it, it insoluble, right? We want it to participate out when we have a problem. So then it is sticky and it sticks together that, that cut that we get. You got that? Make sense? Yes, definitely. Silver. All right. So we have most of you already. No tons of discussions. Oh, and then I want to have some extra credit talk at the end of the class. So make sure I don't forget. Okay. Next, number four, red blood cells are cells that have the nucleus sucked out of them. They look like discs with both sides bending in. This shape is great because it makes them flexible so they can squeeze through narrow vessels. Also, red blood cells or RBCs are basically bags filled with the protein hemoglobin. A gas attaches to those hemoglobins and transports it from the lungs to the body cells, where it is used to make ATP or energy. The discs, are, the disc like RBCs, have a great shape because the gas doesn't have to travel far to reach any given uh, hemoglobin inside them, which is called a short uh, diffusion span. What gas attached to the hemoglobin? Wait, first say. Say name first, and then say what it is. Ebony oxygen. Okay, sorry, I know, I know. Everybody gonna get a chance. I just wanna make sure everybody participates, and I have to figure out, I don't have a button. We should have a red button, like in, what is it called? <laughs> Show? <laughs> so, sorry if I overrun a few people and you had given an answer. Um, we'll figure out the system, and at the end, it's not about getting credit. I just wanna make sure if I miss people that are just not really, participating because believe it or not it reflects on the test it already has in the second test all right um so that was the shape do you understand that shape question like the fact that like if you if you put a hemoglobin here in the middle somewhere the direction it, the distance it has to travel from the cell surface to the hemoglobin is, is always around the same distance, no matter where that damn thing is. If this cell were big and round, it would have to travel really far on some, in some areas where it is and much less far in others. So if a hemoglobin were in the center of the cell, if this were a globe, those hemoglobins probably would not get much oxygen attached to it at all. And so that's where basically the red cell, the red blood cells are bags of hemoglobin. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Oh, somebody's sending me a text. Let's see if it's important. Lost connection. Uh oh. We'll hope we'll get back in. Uh, blah, 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 blah. RBCs only live about three months before they get broken down by the liver and the spleen. Since their job is so vital, we have as so many of them, our body has to produce them at a rate of, now that was always blows my mind, 160 million per minute. The RBCs are made in the red bone marrow. A hormone released by the kidneys regulate the RBC production. What's that hormone called? Name first. Jessica, the last one. Erythropoietin. 
it's called good that's a cool name isn't it so you look at that name you know uh, well the only thing i recognize is Ar erythro is red blood cell so that's just another one of those name questions since the white blood cells provide us with immunity some of their numbers increase during infection we call that leukocytosis you can feel that for example when you get the flu and the lymph nodes in your neck swell up and hurt what can leukopenia, which is when we have too few of them, indicate? Alice, cancer and the use of drugs? Cancer and the use of, yes, the, the corticosteroid drugs. Very good. All right, so that the name of those things is what I want to point out in this slide. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Leukocytosis and, and, and osis is a, is a pathology. It means too much. So there's, there's too many uh, white blood cells. And penia, the word penia indicates, indicates something less than. Like leukopenia is less white blood cells, so it's not enough of them. Um, osteopenia is a condition that you get before osteoporosis. So that's when the calcium in the bone is diminished, but it's not porous yet. It's not uh, pathology yet. So the word penio is interesting to remember. Ooh, I got some good green tea right here. Hey, I did yoga today. Are you guys doing stuff at physical during this time? Yeah, I've been running. I've I've been taking advantage of the like trails by my house, going on walks. It's really nice. It's nice, right? I yeah. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, I think it's a good time to put a, you know, I mean, some of us are really busy and it's an anxious time, but it's also a good time to try to put some different routines in, in motion a little bit because we just have, uh, mo many of us have extra time or too much time, right? Um, so I try to go hiking and try to do yoga and I'm even starting to think about weights. I'm like, what the heck is wrong with me? Um, anyway, I've never been a gym guy. Um, and I know we are covering blood and the white blood cells are discussed in this chapter. However, many of them live throughout the body in the tissues where they are needed. Again, white blood cells are immune cells. So they help us defend against immune uh, problems. Uh, others, uh, used, uh, blah, blah, others use the bloodstream for means of travel. Damage to tissues releases chemicals that signal to divide blood cells in the area to squeeze through the blood vessels and move to the damaged sites to help to clean it up. What is the term diapetesis mean? Name first. Anybody? Can I? Uh, is that the number seven? Mm-hmm. Oh, um, well, my answer was uh, white blood cells squeeze through capillary wall. But was it wrong? No, I, it was right. And that, that's the right answer, I think. So, okay. so it's really cool stuff. Uh, uh, so that's great. That was Marcella, right? Yes. It's really cool stuff when you see here. So, for example, you caught yourself. And the chemicals get released from the cut area and the neutrophils, at least those are the first ones that get to the area, they sort of smell that chemical. It's kind of like a pheromone or some weird stuff that is really kind of crazy. But they, they smell that and they move towards that area of the cut. This is where the cut is, where it's really red. And they call that chemotaxis. Um, and I remember that it's like a chemical and the taxi, a taxi brings you somewhere. It's like a taxi by chemical, something like that. And then they move, they have this ability to contract and elongate, kind of like a worm or something that they move around. And then that's called, um, a di no, that's called um, the amoeboid motions, the amoeboid motions. And then they squeeze through blood vessels. So the blood vessels that go by the injured area, they can just go by and they smell it and then they squeeze through it. And that's what they call diapedesis. So good answer there. I just always have been fascinated by that ability that they have that. And that brings me to number eight, why blood cells are selfless. They die defending your body. They love you that much. If there's pus in the wound, you know that neutrophils perish in the battle that's safe to save you. Neutrophils, 
Uh, neutrophils, where was that? Neutrophils are the most numerous white blood cells and the first one to arrive at a site of injury and inflame, or inflammation. They are filled with little granules containing enzymes that neutralize, that's why they're called neutrophils, pathogens, which are foreign substances harming you. Uh, pathogens which are foreign substances harming you. What is the main job of eosinophils? Choose all that apply. Um, to excess histamine and attack parasite worms? Yes. Let's go to that. Good. And that was Melissa. Um, can I ask a question about that, the number eight? Um, I got a little bit stuck because in the beginning, I mean, initially I put down three. So I put bone to excess histamine. Mm -hmm. And the second was attack parasite, parasitic worms. And then phagos, I told foreign material. So I got a little bit confused because in the notebook it says, I, I don't know, you can break it down for me. Is yeah, which one? The phagocytose? Which yeah. one was the one? The phagocytose? Phagocytose and Titan antibody. So I got a little bit confused in that mm -hmm. part. Can you break it down? Can you explain? Because I put three. Yeah, no, when I, I think of when I think of a phagocyte, to, you know, I'm trying to um, um, break down what the individual ones are sort of doing that we have somehow to just have a couple of phrases that we remember them by. And so when we go phagocyte toes, in, the big one is the neutrophil that that ingests material and destroys the material. That's what I um, associate that most with. And then, um, and then we have the eosinophil that do the histamine, uh, limit the allergic reaction and do the parasitic worms. And then the basophils are the one that give us the, um, the, the histamine, the hypersensitivity reaction. So those are actually numerous when we have allergic reactions, for example. So the answer phagocytose foreign material is not right. I mean, no, I will put right? no, I will put it. It's it's, you know, you could make probably make an argument with like, well, if it, it eats the worms, that's foreign material. But when you look at generically, when something gets like when dirt comes into the skin, what who goes there to just clean up the mess? Mm -hmm. It's the neutrophil that goes cleans up the mess as a general cleaning a uh, uh, as a general cleaner. Okay. And then uh, does that, you know, that, that makes sense? Yeah. See, that, that's why you can go back and redo the quiz. That's why <laughs> I did the, t the, the test like three times because I, I wasn't getting that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But well, I finally got it. <laughs> if you get too frustrated, just wait to the class and do it afterwards. <laughs> I know. You probably saw that I did like the test like five, six times because of that question. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I didn't Google actually Google. look. I, I didn't actually look. Yeah, um, and so Google. actually the, one, the ones that we just talked about here, these, these are the neutrophil, the basophil, eosinophil and the basophil, those are called a, a granulocytes because when they stain them, they mm -hmm. have little dots in the background and those are granules. And so the, the, those are three out of the five um, white blood cell types. And then we have the A granulocyte and they do not stain any granules and those are the lymphocytes and then the monocytes uh let's actually see do we have a question on that before i just start blabbing about it yeah let's go to the question number one have you heard of b and t cells they live in lymphoid organs such as the lymph nodes where they encounter pathogens and learn how to recognize specific ones exposed to them uh they uh, they then very harshly fight that specific type of pathogens when encountered the next time. What do we call B and T cells collectively? Name first. Lymphocytes. And who is that? Ayana. Hello. Hey. How are you? Good. Good, good, good. Yes, that is correct. Lymphocytes. So that's the uh, that that's an A granulocyte. So that's that second group. That first the the, the neutrophils, basophils, and eosinophils. Eosinophils are the granulocytes, and then the A granulocytes are the lymphocytes and the monocytes. And monocytes live in many body tissues as macrophages, which means eater of large things. Macro, 
Macro means large things and phage means eating. Remember cell chapter at the end? Cell in their eating means, means phage, uh, phagocytosis. So phage means eating, uh, blah, blah. They destroy pathogens and then present antigens, which are the pathogens identifying part on the, parts on the surface, uh, on their surface. So that's really cool. So those monocytes eat the crap that makes us sick and, and destroy it so we don't get sick. And then they take the antigen and the antigen is the identifying part of a pathogen. So it's not necessarily the whole pathogens that makes us sick. It's just a shell has an identifying part, like a flag on top of it that says, oops, that's this one. That's an E. coli thing. That's the coronavirus. That's, you know, that kind of stuff. And that's an antigen. And so they then present that to the B and T cells and the B and T cells are the one that then go kill it. And so that's kind of cool. Uh, what do we call those activated monocytes? Anybody that hasn't spoken yet? Uh-oh. Shamim, I'll do it. The there den, you go. It's the dendritic cells and the antigen presenting cells. Right. So we call those dendritic cells and antigen presenting cells. They're both the same thing. Them, uh, uh, they just, they have those two synonymous names. Um, and there they are. And see how they have spinies to them. That's why they call dendritic. Dendrites mean spiny kind of stuff. All right. So that's pretty cool. So the antigen... You got that, right? The antigen is the thing that the 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 doesn't the thing that is identifying the cells that make us sick or the pathogens that make us sick. And so because we use that in, in vaccines, we try to take the flu, the flu virus, and take everything that makes us sick away, just leave the antigen, and then it gets into our system. And our monocytes eat it and say like, whoa, there's something wrong here. They present it and then the B and T cells respond to it, but we didn't have anything that makes us sick. But that's the good thing about that is when we then get exposed again in real time, and it's really a virus, we have all these, all these activated B and T cells that are ready to fight. They already understand how that, uh, how that virus looks like. And so they have all these, what we call then antibodies. The B cells make antibodies that can fight that virus because they recognize the antigen. So antigen, antibodies. Can I ask a question? Very, yes. Since you just said that, so they said that they'll have the um, vaccine for the COVID-19 in 18 months exactly. And in 18 months, would you, be t would you get the vaccine? Would I do what? Would you be willing to take the vaccine in 18 months when it's ready? Probably. I mean, yeah. it took me a long, it took me a long, I can be honest, it took me a long time to give in and, and take the uh, flu vaccine. But once I realized that, you know, the problem with the flu is it can really kill you. And, and a vaccine doesn't necessarily prevent you from getting the flu, but it for sure seems to be minimizing the, the effect. And so, you know, and I think the COVID will be very similar. The COVID is pretty toxic stuff. And so I, okay. I, I want to, you know, I, I, you know, the problem is if you look in the internet, the anti-vaccine community is so big on the internet because it's that social media is so, it's, it spreads it so, so nice. And we have to be careful with vaccines. When I had my kids, it was an issue for me about the vaccines with the kids and with my second daughter, I decided to just, you know, wait. When my kid is two, she's not going to be sexually active. So I don't have to give her a vaccine that is preventing her from that, you know, for example, which they do because in pediatrics, the problem is the parents don't go to the, you know, it's hard to bring the kid to the doctor to get vaccinated. And so they figure the more we put together, the more we spread out the vaccines over the population. But sometimes the kids are small and they have a reaction. And so I just figured, if I wait a little bit with certain vaccines or I spread them out, then my, then my kid's body can take care of it better. And so, you know, generally I, I look at vaccines more like 
that, you know, there is a critical looking at a vaccine, but not the conspiracy vaccine theories. We have to be very, very careful. Like it does not cause autism. Autism happens before the baby's even born. You know, those genes are laid down and they can check those genes now. So that is debunked, for example, as being a problem with vaccines. And so I think, I think, especially then as a healthcare worker, I'll probably do take it. Yeah. Sorry. Well, I just want to say one more thing. Like I used to get like, back, like the flu shot, like five years straight. I got sick every single time. And then I haven't had the flu shot in 12 years and I've never had the flu. Yeah, I mean, you know, the best, the absolute best uh, medicine against the flu is to have a good immune system. That's way better than any shot or anything. I mean, in, in the 1918 pandemic, chiropractic was, was, was approved by a lot of states because people wouldn't die because you activate the immune system and you start working around on the spine. But you could do that playing on a foam roller or so. You don't have to go to a Cracker Jack person, you know. Uh, but but stuff like that is is much more important than just sitting back and getting the shot. I think that's I think that's the the point that's always brings home to me when when I hear those kind of stories. Okay. Thank anyway, you so a cut in a blood vessel is a problem because blood leaks out of it. The body uses a very uh, a very well thought out process to patch up that leak. What are the cells fragments? What are the cell fragments that play a major role in blood clotting calls? Choose all that apply. Name first. Mary Carmen. Hello. Hi, lipoproteins and platelets, I think. Uh, platelets is good. What's the other? The other one's not lipoprotein, but do you have another idea? It could be thrombocytes. So let's go right there. So that's good here. Thank you for that. Um, Look at that. We're moving right along. This We talked about that. It's not a cute shot. Well, I, I got to be a nerd thinking that's funny. Uh, but here we go. Platelets, and they're also known as thrombocytes. Sites is, I don't know what thrombo means, but sites refers to cells. So basically, they're cell fragments. So there's like a, a large cell that gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then it explodes and then those cell fragments go into the bloodstream and they live there five to 10 days. And if something happens with, you know, a, a blood vessel gets caught or something, we're going to get the coagulation happening in that area. And let's see what next is here in the questions. If we have one more on the coagulation to prevent blood loss after an injury vessels around, it will tighten and narrow to minimize blood loss. Okay. That's the first thing that happens when a block gets caught. The blood vessel gets caught. Platelets then deposit around that cup that makes them sticky, so they cling to one another, creating a plug. The next step is the th uh, trickiest one. The fiber part of the block gets activated, making them able to help to patch up, patch up the vessel. So this is, where, this is where that insoluble fiber turns into soluble fiber. So that's the most important step in this whole situation is this right here uh, where the 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 um fibrinogen is a soluble fiber that we have floating around in the block when we're just everything is honky dory and then when we make it insoluble and it participates out and it can help patch up the blood vessels then we call it fibrin and it's sort of this sticky sticky thing and it's important because when we give blood, we have to make sure that the blood that lays around does not have fibrinogen in it. So it doesn't make fibrin because if the blood is stays, stay, it stays around, it doesn't move. This process happens also. The blood gets sticky on its own. And so that's where that becomes a problem. All right. So that's a little bit trickier. And then, so that's this top part here. And then once the vessel is healed up, we get an enzyme that dissolves the plug. And what's that enzyme called? Name first. Hey, I got 20 people on a, on a thing. And let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There you Jessica. go. Hi, Jessica. Uh-oh, that you know you already did it once. Anybody else who hasn't spoken yet? Otherwise, we go to round two. I spoke, but I had a question. 
Okay, question. Yeah, yeah, of course you can always ask questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I put down an answer and I got it wrong, but I kind of like wanted to know why. Okay, I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Okay. Well, if we don't have anybody else speaking, why don't uh, we go ahead. Shameen, I could do it. Oh, it was, no, but you it? already did one, Shameen. Oh, okay. Well, then so why don't you stay, stay with it, Evan. Let's just talk it through. Okay. I, I can do it. I haven't done it yet. Oh, there you go. Who's that? Um, Chris Plasman. Oh, there you go. Thank you. All right. What is it? Oh, Plasman? Yeah. Oh, let's see. Is that actually the right answer? What did you put, Ebony? It is Plasman. Um, I put, I thought that it was when it dissolved it that it was like the fibrin, not the fibrinolysis. Oh, but the enzyme that does it is the plasma. The, oh, the, okay. The, the process is called fibrinolysis. If you look at the word lysis. Yeah, like, that's why I thought it was the dissolving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're good thinking. You're good thinking. That's just, it describes the process. Oh. It dissolves the fiber and who does it is the plasma. So when you look at an enzyme, when your question comes of an enzyme, you're always thinking it's something that's doing something. Oh, okay. Right? Enzymes are like these things that do all these processes in the body. But that, you did good thinking. That's, you know, in a test, I will give you credit for that if I go. Yeah, on. I saw like yeah. the dissolving, so I put, so that's what I thought that was. But um, Yeah, no, no, you did totally right. It's just that I asked for the enzyme versus the okay. process. That's all. All right, number 13, spinning blood will push the heavier cellular components to the bottom, leaving the plasma on top. What needs, oh, I talked about that before. What needs to be removed to make it serum? Anybody who hasn't spoken yet? Hey, I got some people, come on. The third one? The, yes, good, Catherine. Yep. I know I do see you somewhere. Right. So fibrinogen. So that's back to that question of the of the you know the problem. The be problem becomes when we have blood that slows down and doesn't like we give blood and we need to have it in a bag before we give it to somebody else. Uh, we need to remove that fibrinogen because if we don't, it becomes soluble, insoluble fiber participates out, makes the blood sticky, and you can't use it. It's useless. All right. That's what that was about. Boom, boom, boom. 14. Blood plasma is mostly water with protein, nutrients, and salts devolved, dissolved in it. Protein in the blood has many, have many uses. Some help establish osmotic pressure. What was that about? Remember back in chemistry when we talked about osmosis, the ability of a molecule to pull water towards itself? Like the putting salt in a cup of tomato. Remember that? Yeah. Good. Yeah. I, well, you know, it took me so many years to understand osmosis, so I want to make sure I try to understand it. Uh, when you let that sit for a few minutes, you can see drops of water. In the blood vessels, we have proteins that can pull liquid from the tissues back into the blood vessels. What are those proteins called? First name. Jennifer is the first one. Albumin. Perfect. Thank you, Jennifer. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Girl, you're welcome. Thank you. I'm, it's good to hear from you. It's actually a good system, so I get to hear from you guys a little bit. All right. So that um, is in this next slide described all the different uses. The plasma is mostly water. We got some proteins, we got some other stuff in there like vitamins and hormones and uh, proteins do a whole bunch of stuff like, you know, transport lipids around, blood clotting, antibodies, and then albumin is the really cool one because if you think about, I mean, I think they're all cool, but that this one is kind of cool. Uh, if you think about the blood gets squeezed out, when it, when it comes from the heart, the blood goes to the body, gets squeezed out into the tissues and then um, how's it going to get back to the blood? And so one system is that the albumin stays behind because it's too big to get squeezed out of, out of the blood vessel and it will attract blood molecules back into the, into the blood, um, sodium and blood and water. Sodium and water always go together. Salt and water always go together. That's always good to remember that. We talk about that when we talk about the kidneys much more. But the albumin staying behind will pull that water back towards it. 
and that's how a large quantity of the volume of blood comes back into the blood vessel after it gets squeezed out into the tissues from the blood vessels. That's how we avoid having to have all these little hearts in all the tissues. And other protein functions to transport fat around in the body. Remember, fats don't like to be in water. They're hydrophobic and aggregate or clump together. Think of oil and vinegar in an Italian salad dressing. You gotta shake it before you can pour it over the salad. Otherwise, you, all you get is oil and then after the end you get all vinegar. Uh, round protein spheres called lipoproteins are oil friendly on the inside, making them able to carry fats around in the body. The body is a water friendly environment. The liver is essential for fat processing. Uh, or metabolism, we call it chemical processing. Some lipoproteins carry the fats from the liver and distribute them into the body. Others collect them and bring them back to the liver. Which of them is the latter one also called the good cholesterol? Oh, Cesar? Uh, yes. HDL? HDL. So when you look at your cholesterol profile, you look at the total cholesterol, and you look at the LDL, and you look at the HDL. We don't really track the VLDL. That's just very low density. So that's the worst one. But the LDL and the HDL is what we do. And so the LDL is bad because it carries lipids from the liver to the body. See, if you eat fats, first the fats go through the stomach, then it goes through the intestine, and then... From the intestine, they go into the bloodstream, and from the bloodstream, they go straight into the general system, and then they go to the liver afterwards. Most of the other stuff goes first right to the liver for processing, but the, the, uh, the fats have to be brought to the liver. And so the HDL is the one that does that. So I think of that as the, the, the vacuum cleaner that picks up all the lipids and brings it to the liver for breakdown and for processing. And so we, we want that number we want higher than that number on a, on a blood test. Does that make sense? Yes. Because we associate, but I have to say one more thing. Sorry, we associate, um, you know, a high cholesterol with more fat in the, or in the blood vessels with more plaques and that's bad for us. The other thing though we have to understand is what they figured out and that's inflammation. And for example, that's why margarine is bad compared to butter. Because butter has a lot of fat, so you think it's all bad crap. But it's not as bad than margarine because margarine increases the inflammation, and that's much worse for our health and, and increases the aging process. So we have to be careful of just thinking, oh, we can't eat butter anymore or something like that. We just got to be careful about that and be in measure. I actually just had a patient, and he had a, he's in his 60s now, and he's – at, at Berkeley, and one of the professors was a nutrition professor uh, that is the Briggs, Dr. Briggs. And that, if you look that up, that was one of the big authors of a really, uh, one of the important uh, nutrition textbooks from the 70s. And he would always tell this, he told me that, he would always say, you know, everything in measure, do not eat no eggs, just don't eat, own, don't eat 12 eggs for breakfast. Just be measured. So anyway, food for thought. Ta-da! So we always have to do that with the cholesterol, of course. Give me back to my quiz. What's wrong with me? No, I can't go back to my quiz. No, I don't want that. Uh oh. Oh well, you gotta see me for a second. Uh, screen share. There we go. Sixteen. Another cool protein group are antibodies. They are part of the specific immunity attacking specific pathogens, in part by poking holes into their walls. They also bind to antigens by tagging them for destruction by the white blood cells. What is the tagging process called? Anybody else who hasn't spoken yet? Come on. I think next week I'll start calling on people. All right, let's do second round. Very so. And open for anybody. Okay, very so. <laughs> Opsonization. Opsonization. Perfetto. There you go. Blood stuff. <laughs> there you go. Tagging them is opsonization. That's a big one. And so another one is they make, they go and poke holes, collectively poke holes into the 
cell wall of a, of a foreign of a pathogen and then destroy it that way. Once you destruct the cell membrane, you can pretty much can destroy the, the problem or the pathogen. Um, that's a disruptive force. So that's perfect. Each hemoglobin in an RBC contains four irons, iron ions. Each of them can pick up an oxygen atom and then travels through the lungs and releases it and passes to the tissue in need. How does uh, most of the waste product, CO2, travel through the body? The third one. And that's Jessica? Yeah. Bound to bicarbonate ions. Perfect. Jessica. Beat me to it. <laughs> Aha! I know, we got almost make it a game, right? A little bit. Hey, did you see my hat? Love it. I've got Let's right. see. We got to do, I think we should do, a, I have to rethink about this extra credit crap. I think we should do some extra credit challenges like come dressed up to the class or something. Like instead of oh, having, no. you know, we should do that. <laughs> <Yeah. should. laughs> yes. Yeah. Right? That would be fun. I even was when I was hiking, I thought like, hey, maybe I should start playing my ukulele and learn some songs or mm -hmm. something. And then I'm like, I'm a little shy about that. But hey, if somebody's a musician <laughs> or so, we should do some music playing or so, you know, at the end to, to call out the class or something like that. Anyway, so we'll get back to that at the end of the class to see what we want to do as a target for that. Okay, numbers, that's the hemoglobin. The challenge with giving someone in, oh wait, I wanted to talk about this blood thing for a moment. Wait, 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 wait. So the O2, the oxygen is easy, right? That goes straight to the hemoglobin and that's how we get it into the body. That's what every, already always everybody talks about. But then the CO2 transport does not go on the hemoglobin, but it is carried through the uh, chemical binding to bicarbonate. And bicarbonate is the one where you go, you think of Alka-Seltzer. That's the, the decreased acid thing. And so we talked about that um, already when we talked, we talked chemical about that uh, before. And, and so that's the same thing. Um, so the, the carbon dioxide will bind to this molecule then go to the lungs and reverse back to uh, carbonic acid. And then it goes back and forth uh, in, the blood, in, the, in the system, in the bloodstream, it picks up carbon dioxide in the lungs, it lets go of it. And that's that back and forth. All right, anyway, next question is about giving blood and the fact that your blood might not be compatible and we get a blood, blood transfusion reaction, which could kill somebody. Um, and so that's very important. RBCs, red blood cells, have markers on the surface that identify them. And we can go back to the um, ch cell chapter in the glycocalyx. Those are some of those markers. Um, it has to do with the immune system. And so what happens with the, with when you get a blood cell, a red blood cell from some donor that doesn't have the same or it has some big significant difference in the glycocalyx, in the uh, in the in the code around the blood cells where those markers are, the recipient will have a immune reaction because it's an antigen, and so the you know the immune system will respond to an antigen like it's a foreign problem and we need to get rid of it, and so those markers, those antigens will be very very important to understand, and in the in the in the in us in our blood system we have two systems in the worry about. And one is the ABO system, and then the other one is the RH system. And in the ABO system, we have basically different antigens that we need to differentiate. And how many different antigens do we differentiate in that system? Open for you guys. Is it two? Yes. Who was that? Melissa. I thought it was three. I know. I always have to think about it, too. I think it said three on the, well, as far as the correct answer on the quiz. I think. Oh, did it? I think so. Oh, crap. Could be wrong. Because it's two. Okay. I want the answer to be two. And the reason is this is the chart we need. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't go so far. So we have group A, group B, group AB, and group O. So the reason why we have group Two, two antigens, we get four groups out of it. Um, I, what number is that question number? Uh, 18, I think. Okay, I'll look after class. 
If 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 it's... I did, I picked three and I got it wrong. Okay, then I I was mistaken. Yeah, and sometimes the canvas is goofy. I mean, on the test when I graded all these tests, okay. Lord, that was a lot of test grading. Holy cow! I'm gonna do something different than that. Uh, but sometimes you guys typed it in the right way and it looked like exactly the way that I gave an answer and it still got it wrong. So I'm not so sure. Some of that is a little goofy. So if you, you have questions of such nature, always reach out to me, just shoot me a text and we'll look at it. All right. Uh, but the, so, so it's two antigens. So we have, we have antigen. So here's the antigen that bottom. So you see the column here, the bottom column, we have antigen a, and that's the antigen present in the blood type A, group A blood type. So if you have group A, you have antigen A on your red blood cells. If you have group B, you have antigen B on your blood cells. All right? And so you're cool with your same group's blood, but you're not cool with the other group's blood because your blood has antibodies against the opposite antigen so see the antibodies you got is anti b so that's for the b uh, uh antigen so you're if you have type a blood and you get type b blood your body gonna go say like oh hell no and it's gonna attack it because it's got antibodies against that blood type so anti means antibodies antibodies present so that's what anti b means so that's where they are reversed and so you know the same is true if you have B blood and you get A, you're going to get screwed because you have anti-A antibodies. And then there is AB blood, and those are both antigens are present on the cell. So when the antigen, not one more thing, when the, the antigen is present on your cell, you're not going to have antibodies against that antigen because your body already knows, oh, that's one of ours. It doesn't have to attack it. And so AB is, is great in terms of they can get all the bloods from anybody they want because they don't have no antibodies against nothing in terms of what we're worried about here. And so they're called the universal recipient because they are no antibodies. And then group O is very nice because it doesn't have any antigens. The problem is it's got both antibodies. So group O is... If you have group O and you give blood, everybody else can get your blood because there's nothing to react to it, except you can't get nobody's blood because you've got both antibodies against both blood types. So you can only get type O. So that's called a universal donor right in here. Would that make some sense? Yes. So I always get confused and we got a blood test thing in school, which we don't do now. And it's very easy to get confused. And so keep this way of thinking about it in your head next time you encounter it and it gets confusing. The blood type is named by what antigen you have and you will have the antibodies against the opposite one. And you start with that and then you extrapolate from there. All right? Thank just you. Just in case. Well, yeah, maybe it's just my, me being a little retarded, but this abiosis, this stuff is hard. That, that thing is not easy for me to grasp. It took me a long time. And, of course, we still have something else. We have a second reactive element on an RBC. It's called the RH factor. And these antigens, when given to recipients without them, will not cause an immediate reaction, but sensitize the body, which means it's producing RH antibodies that then can attack the RH antigen after another exposure. When does this become a life-threatening problem? Number two. Number two, second pregnancy. So this is very, is it kind of interesting? This is like exactly how our immune system works, like how vaccines or such work. There wasn't a vaccine. Why wasn't there a vaccine question? Oh, vaccines come in the immune system. Um, 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 so, so, the first time you you get you get a rh positive blood if you're rh negative which is just another marker the rh is just another marker on your blood uh, red blood cells and if you don't have the marker and you get the marker you have no reaction to it because your body just gets sensitized to it so it's like it's like when you 
you get, that's the vaccine, the sensitization process. That's the same thing, right? And then next time you get exposed to the flu, you don't get the flu or maybe you do, but it shouldn't get it as harsh um, 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 as without that sensitization process. In here, it's just negative because the problem is when, when you're going to have a baby, let me go to the baby. Let me go to the baby here. Ah. When you have a, a negative mom that gives labor to a positive baby and therefore as the baby gets through the birth canal, some blood will spill over to the mom. Not before that. So at that point, the mom will get sensitized blood. And in a second pregnancy, again, the RH negative mom, but a positive baby with, so the mom doesn't necessarily, doesn't have the RH uh, antigen on them, but the baby does. And then some will cross over again. And then we'll get a reaction. And then the mom's antibodies will cross to the baby and kill, you know, hurt the baby, agglutinate the, uh, clump together the red blood cells in the baby because the baby has the RH to react to. The mom doesn't have the RH to react to. The mom just has the antibodies at that point. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's a little virtuality, but that's um, that. Read, be, be reading that a few times or listen to the thing again uh, to, to learn it. Now, in, in our world, we have Rogan. So we have the ability to prevent this process from happening in our me modern medical world. So we're kind of good with that. So we don't have to worry about that anymore unless you don't go to the doctor if you're pregnant then we, or before you go to the labor, but hopefully that won't happen. Um, do you see the footsie, the, the footsie here? Isn't that cute? <laughs> I thought that was really cute. All right. So with that, we're going to go to the next topic. Unless you have another question.